Hello all, I am Dr. Danit Salim. Today we will discuss about few M FRCM intermediate tips, how to tackle this exam. I will discuss few questions with the common errors which are done by the intermediate candidates and the few tips and how to write the exam, how to go uh, each question, how to approach the question and all those things will be discussed. So basically, FRCM intermediate is a tough exam. Uh, the topics and syllabus is very enormous. You have to start preparing at least three months prior to the exam. Read the guidelines, read the latest uh, latest updates, and focus on the uh, ALS and the ATLS guidelines. These are very important. The questions are important. You have to solve the question, but logic and common sense are very important. Uh, each question you have to read, find out what they what they expect, what the UK uh, college, the college, the Royal College, what they expect from you. That's what you have to answer. So those who are writing first time, I will explain. FRCM intermediate is a uh, 60 questions are around 60 questions are there. Uh, total of 180 marks. You have around 180 minutes. So basically, if you say you have around three minutes for a question to answer but i recommend you to answer 10 questions in 25 minutes so that in 150 minutes you'll be able to cover uh, the whole questions like 60 questions you'll be able to finish and later on 30 30 minutes you will get extra so that you can attempt all the unanswered questions so it is not a just a small theory paper it is about testing your clinical knowledge. So the college, the Royal College, just want to know how you will practice uh, the emergency medicine or how you will treat the patient uh, when it comes to their uh, their uh, department. So yeah, it is nothing but it is just getting a momentum and slowly you will be able to uh, cope up with the situation. And you have to plan properly what all things to read, execute the plan. I'll be discussing the tips also in the next video. So let me share the video uh, some Sorry, I'm finding it difficult to share this way to wait. Okay, just hold on. Sorry for the delay. Okay, I got it now. So, I'll be discussing few tips here. First, I'll discuss few uh, scenarios like five to five questions. I'll discuss here. Let us start now. So, I'll discuss five questions: the common mistakes uh, which are done by the intermediate candidates, and then slowly we'll move on to the FRCM tips. There are 20 tips which are taken from the college website and from the many website. It is very, very much needed and you have to know and you have to follow these steps to crack down intermediate exams. And how to write exam, how to read the each questions and how to write exams I will be discussing. And what to follow in the exam week and exam day and the book and resources to follow. So first we'll start on the five questions. In this video, I will be discussing about these five questions. So let us start with the first video. So this video, as you can see, a person uh, is having some problem. So what the questions are, what is the diagnosis? What is the pathology? And what is the nerve involved here? So most of the uh, FRC intermediate students have answered it like winging of scapula, serratus anterior muscle injury and the long thoracic nerve injury. And they thought that they will be getting three marks for this question. But unfortunately, they got only 1.5 marks. So I'll tell you what is the reason why they lost mark. So here, see you just, uh, you, you have to describe, you have to explain it actually. See, the, it can clearly see that it is in the left side. So you can write like left side beginning of scapula and do not 
put LT. You have to write LEFT, left side winging of the scapula. The pathology involved, left serratus anterior. What injury? What is the nerve involved? Left thoracic nerve injury. So if you write in a descriptive form, you, you will get three marks. So these are the common mistakes. See, UK, the college expect you to write it in a detailed way so that the person who is reading will not miss anything from your patient. So you have to understand this question, why uh, these students are getting less mark such in a, such an easy question. Now we'll go to the question two. So you can see a person who fell down from a bicycle is having some fracture. So question is, what is the diagnosis? What is the possible mechanism of injury? And what is the name of this deformity? So from the previous question, you will be answering right side now. But the fracture, which, which, which is the fracture? So you might, uh, you will be confused with uh, Smith or Collis or Barton. So just see where the dorsal, I uh, mean, where the distal part of the radius has gone. So it has gone, it has gone ventrally. So if it is gone good dorsally, you should have thought Collis. So it is a Smith fracture. But when you write, right Smith fracture, uh, you will be getting mark, but better write it, write it like this. Dorsal part of the radius is displaced ventrally. Diagnosis is right Smith fracture. So you'll be getting one mark for this question. What is the possible mechanism of agile? Usually these type of mechanism happen when you fall on the outstretched hand. So the same thing you can write, but you will get only half mark. So the colleagues is definitely because of the fall on outstretched hand, but in and uh, Smith fracture, it is due to the uh, fall on outstretched hand, but on the palmar flexion, uh, the the uh, position of the hand on while falling will be on palmar flexion. So if you do not write that, you will not get mark here. So these are the two tricky questions. Not that tricky, but if you write it in a correct way, uh, you will be able to score two marks. And what is the name of this deformity? It is garden spade deformity. That you have to know. That is about your knowledge. So you will be able to nail three marks here if you are writing like this. Now about the question three. Question three, you can see an ECG rhythm strip and you can see some rhythm. So first question is, what is the rhythm? So as you can see in this question, you will see what is the next step? And finally, what will you do if this step fails in the emergency department? Okay, you can see some ventricular pacing. So if you are writing as a ventricular paced rhythm, you will get only 0.25 mark not even 0.5. So as you can see, the, uh, the QRS complex are uh, somewhere, it is not, the, after the capture bit is not followed by, uh, the QRS is not followed by the capture bit. So that is very important. So you have to write ventricular pace rhythm without mechanical captures, you know, without capture bits. That is the correct answer, okay? So otherwise you can write failed ventricular paced rhythm with, uh, without capture beats. That is a correct answer. Now, second question, what is a next step? So next step, next step means what will you do to correct this? So in the question, if, if they say that the heart rate is 30, hypotension and all, the student will be tempted to answer dopamine or atropine or transvenous spacing or all. But you have to understand uh, the patient is already on the pacemaker, so that answer will be wrong. And if you give drugs in this case, it will not be effective. So the, both the options will be wrong. So do not write that. So in order to get the capture bit, what you have to do? You have to increase the voltage. So that is the answer. Increase the voltage to get the capture bits in every after every capture every, after every capture uh, after every pacing. That is the answer. After every pacing, uh, we have to get a capture bit. So increase the voltage to get a capture bit after every pacing, pacing. So that is the answer. Now, what will you do if this step fails in the emergency department? So what will you do? So you will write like some people will write, uh, think about transvenous pacing. Transvenous pacing. Call anesthetist or call a cardiologist. All those things you will write. But before that, you just think in the emergency department, what else you can do? You can reconnect the 
uh, reconnect and see whether it is working properly. The leads can be connected again. See whether the pacemaker is working properly. Then you think about the, then you write that, call the consultant or call the cardiologist. So if you answer like this, you will be getting three marks. So what is a rhythm? Rhythm is ventricular pace rhythm without capture beats. Okay. Second, what is the next step? Increase the voltage to till you get the capture beat. What will you do if this step fails in the emergency department? Reconnect the leads. Check whether the pacemaker is working properly. Finally, call the consultant or call the cardiologist. Okay. So that is how you have to answer this question. Now, question four. A 36-year-old female came with history of high fever, abdominal pain and vomiting. She was also complaining about greenish yellow discharge with fishy odor. Her heart rate is 118 per minute, BP of 110.70 mm mercury. Temperature is around 38.2 degrees Celsius. UPT is negative. Blood investigations are normal. So from this question, it is very clearly, you know, you can know that it is a pelvic inflammatory disease or probably it will be a gardenella. But the questions you have to see, name two indication for inpatient therapy. So question is not about the diagnosis. Okay. Now name two complications associated with this condition. So you have to write the two complications. And finally, if the patient is not responding to the initial outpatient treatment, what is your next management steps of this condition? So you have to read this stem again. So question, when you read the uh, question or description, you understood what is a diagnosis. So now the trick is in the uh, stems. Name two indication for inpatient therapy. So commonly the person, uh, if they have not read the nice guidelines, all those things, what they will answer? Uh, uh, the patient if it is systemically unwell or if the patient uh, failed to the medical treatment. So if you answer like that, you will get 0.25 or 0.5 mark. But the specific to this disease, what is specific? When you have to treat a PAD in hospital, PAD in pregnancy, when the PAD is associated with the tube over an abscess, these two indication if you write, you will definitely will get one mark. Name two complications associated with this condition. There are many complications, crowding, pelvic pain, infertility, ectopic pregnancy. Two you have to write. Only two they will mark. So uh, the more uh, common things are infertility and ectopic pregnancy. So write that. You will be definitely will be getting one mark. So next question. If the patient is not responding to the initial outpatient treatment. See, this is very important. You already have given some medicines and she is not responding. What is your next management step of this condition? Very important. Okay. So already you had given some antibiotic and discharged her home. But now she has come. And now, how will you treat this case? Okay, so that they are asking about severe PAD treatment. So severe PAD treatment is injection. So first, you can write the antibiotic. So management steps they are asking. So at least two points you have to write. One or two points. So you can write injection ceftriaxone IV to be given along with metronidazole and uh, then some quinolones to be given. That is a one option. Second, if there is tube over in abscess, drain, uh, surgical drainage is required. Next, next one, if there is intrauterine devices, remove it. Final, treat the partner. In this two option, you can select and write it. Two option is enough because third point only, uh, they have asked management steps. That means at least two you have to write. So usually college will, if you are writing in a bit nice sentence and if if that is enough for enough to solve that skin scenario, for example, you are first you are writing tube over in abscess drainage that itself will cure the disease. Next, next is what uh, you are removing the IUD that is also a very important step. So that too, if you write also, you will get mark. Or if you are writing the antibiotic along with the IUD, that is also enough for this for getting one mark. But do not write so much. Do not go. Uh, do not uh, write uh, anything beyond that box. So those things are very important. They will not look into the third point. They will not look into the fourth point. All. So just whatever needed, you have to write it properly.
now question 5 this is the last question which we'll be discussing today 58 uh, 2 year old male known case of uh, motor neuron disease has arrived to emergency department with breathing difficulty he is on tracheostomy tube from last month you examined the patient and found his tracheotomy tracheostomy tube is blocked you tried doing suctioning and it failed okay so what how will you manage this case? this is the question so only one question here and you you will be rewarded three point three marks so you have to write at least three three points and every point should be valid you can you cannot write first point as remove the tracheostomy tube to second point call the anesthetist third point intubate him this will not give you mark so how you have to write remove the tracheostomy tube try to reinsert the tracheostomy tube through the orifice okay first point second if not remove the tracheostomy tube call the anesthetist and try for an intubation as early as possible anticipate difficult airway okay adutha next question next option uh, remove the tracheostomy tube bag and mask ventilation to be given till you get a help so these three options are perfect and each option will solve the issue so if you write like this you will definitely will be getting three marks hope you understood the mistakes the commonly done in each questions i have taken it from the different areas in further we will be i will be trying to discuss few more questions like this and next video will be on frcm tips in that also i will be discussing few scenarios few examples how to answer so keep following our page uh, all the best start reading from now onwards all the best we'll see you soon